Hey everyone, Trucker John here. So quick update, I know it's been a while since I posted something. I wasn't feeling too well, so I just didn't have time to really do anything. Just had to focus on me. Uh, but anyways, uh, bunk heater is fixed. It's been working great so far. I stopped at the Salt Lake City terminal and they took care of me. I was in and out pretty quick, so thank you guys over there. You guys are awesome. So I, I left Salt Lake City. I am on my way to uh, Grandview. Washington, Washington State. So right now I'm uh, I'm here in Oregon. Not sure where in Oregon. I I just came down uh, Cabbage, the Dead Man's Hill, uh, and I'm stopping here at Walmart to pick up a few things. And I just wanted to show this real quick. That's Walmart over there. There's some truck parking over here to the side. I just want to show this sign to you. This is a private property, and this is made available just for over-the-road and weekend truckers. And that's uh, made available by uh, Hatley Construction, Inc. So thanks, guys. Hatley Construction, Inc. You guys are awesome for doing that for us. You guys are watching this. I really appreciate it. Because it's kind of hard to find parking out here sometimes. All right, so just got out of Walmart there. I spent 25 bucks on all of this. I mean, I have like four dinners, five, four or five dinners there. Got my desserts. I've got another eight plus 16, either lunches or so. Got my bananas for breakfast, got bread for sandwiches, my junk food, all this for 25 bucks. So you can definitely eat a little cheaper out here on the road without eating out at fast food all the time or, or being drawn into those very expensive truck stop food um, items. This was much cheaper. This is going to last me a while. And this is on top of the food that I'm actually cooking. You know, I have fresh meat in the in the fridge and some other meat in the freezer that I'm going to I'm planning to cook later. So, this is enough to hold me over plus I got the soups and everything else in my pantry. So, you could definitely eat on a budget out here. You can you don't always have to eat out and spend a lot of money. So, I was able to get it all to fit in there. The burritos unfortunately are not individually wrapped. So I had to keep them in the package, which was kind of unfortunate. I like them when they're individually robbed like that because it just makes more room. But I didn't have to take the ice cream out. I had to take the hot dogs out or the, the corn dogs out of the box. But everything else fit nice and perfectly and it's not gonna, it's not gonna get freezer burn or nothing. All Simply. right, so I'm here in Grandview, Washington. And it snowed a little, not too bad, but it was cold enough to make it nice and slushy and icy. You know, I love winter. I love the beauty of the snow. It's really pretty, but that's the part I hate about it. When, when I was docking here, it, it's basically ice, so my tires were sliding around. Um, I couldn't even slide my tandems because every time I would lock the tandems to try and get them to slide, <laughs> the tires would just slide on the ground on the ice. So they're actually not even locked right now. They're, the pin's not in, so I need to find a dry spot to get them locked back in once they're done. But I chalked the tires and I let them know, so they're aware of it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Um, so they're unloading me right now. Yeah, that and I'm like soaked from my knees down and all inside of my truck here and this little driving section is full of water from the snow and my shoes and it's just nastiness. And this part, you know, my socks are wet. It's irritating. There's a part I don't like about this. But other than that, I, I love the snow. I love the winter. It's all right, so I'm down over there at Grandview. I'm now here in Hermiston, Oregon, picking up some onions. And while I have some time on my hands, I just wanted to show you guys how I make my coffee. Uh, I got to have coffee to run. I'm a coffee drinker. I haven't always been that way. Uh, several years ago, I had to work night shift at one of my jobs. And uh, that's when I started uh, becoming addicted to the caffeine of coffee. Don't do uh, energy drinks. I don't do anything with carbonation. So coffee was the best thing for me. Coffee and tea are my, my uh, go-to for any kind of caffeine and energy. So I, I'm a big fan of cold brew coffee. So I don't have a coffee maker here on the truck. So I do my coffee cold brew. Uh, so I'll kind of show you what that is. So this this is the, the device I use. This is the actual coffee pot. And this is the filter for the coffee. So I take uh, some ground coffee, it has to be must be ground coffee. Can't can't be the beans. I don't ground my own. 
But anyways, I just fill up the uh, the filter all the way up to the top. Just fill it all the way up to the, basically to the top of the filter there. Good. Got the coffee container. closet slash kitchen sink. I got my all-purpose water, drinking water, cooking water, all that good stuff. There's a little coffee left in there, that's why it looks like that. But I don't want to fill it up all the way. About right there. Take the filter and put it inside. And that's why we don't fill it up all the way because we don't want it to overfill. Just screw the lid on, make it nice and airtight. Just like that. And then we shake it for about 30 seconds. Get the water and the grounds to get all nice and wet. Get it all nice and mixed in there. Alright, then we just place it in the fridge and I leave it there for about 12 to 16 hours. So basically by tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I should have some nice ice, ice cold brew coffee. All right, guys. So I'm here at River Point Farm trying to pick up some onions, and I ran into Jonathan here. So what's up, Jonathan? Hey, what's going on, y'all? So, uh, what what company do you work for? I am an owner operator at uh, Gulick, out Gulick. of Vancouver, Washington. So Jonathan is, is the first person that I met out here in the wild that does not work for Prime and he recognized me. So I thought that was pretty cool. And he has a really cool truck, check that out. That's a nice looking Volvo there. Sorry, it's so dark, but uh, yeah, I just uh, stopped by my house real quick on my way down to Santa Maria, California. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna swing by real quick. Uh, kids don't know I'm home. So I have to come home and surprise them. It's just a flyby. I'm only here for my 10 hour break. I'm literally just passing through. But uh, yeah, take a shower, my own shower, and do some laundry. 
Let's get the kids real quick. She's like, I'm saving wings for a special person. Oh, am I not a special person? Oh, hi, Dad. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. How are you? How do you know it's me? You're the only one that would do that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, now I got you on camera. So I made it to Santa Maria. It's been a wild last few days with all this weather. So I docked over there. As I was getting out of the truck, my hat blew off because it's so windy. It's right there. It's literally like, uh, I'm even 10 feet away from me and I can't get it because <laughs> I try to walk over there and it's so slippery in that mud. And I'm not gonna risk. Slipping and falling and getting the rest of myself all muddy and dirty. It's so nasty out here right now with this weather. So, unfortunately, the rest in peace to the prime hat. It's my swing by one of the terminals. I'll, I'll grab another one. Kind of sucks though because that was my uh, that was my trifecta free hat. So it's kind of sentimental. But uh, yeah. I can't believe it's like 10 feet from me and I can't grab it, it really sucks. All right, this is not the first time I've been soaked today because of this weather. What's even more irritating, I've already had to change my whole outfit once because I was soaking wet this morning. I'm not too bad this time, but I'm still wet from that little walk. But what really irritates me is uh, this mess. I mean, you know how, if you watched me at all, you know how clean I like to be, and this is just, I mean, it's nothing you can do about it. It's just all this, every single ship or receiver I've been to has been mud. And, uh, yeah. Can we not just pave all of our yards, please, guys? My goodness. Uh, I've been meaning to clean in here, but every time I go to clean, I arrive to a place like this, and there's no point in cleaning. All right, so I had to stop here at this little rest area here in Shandon, California. Shandon. Shandon, California. Hey, there's a prime truck. What's up, buddy? I hope you're loaded. Because uh, that's why I had to stop. I'm empty. I just dropped off there in Santa Maria and uh, coming through these valleys here. I'll show you again. Here, you know, all these hills, you coming through these little little valleys and everything. And uh, man, the wind is just, the wind is killing me. So I had to stop. I'm two hours from my, my next pickup my 01 but I had to shut it down it was just it was getting a little too scary for me out there and I still had super truckers pass me they're probably loaded though so you know I was doing you know a good 55 miles an hour coming down some of those hills and I just had to slow down it was just too strong and these guys were passing me man it was a little scary so anyways I found this little rest area uh, I'm just gonna have to wake up early tomorrow to get to my 01. I still have to put fuel. I gotta get the trailer washed, so I have a lot to do before I even get to my 01 to start getting loaded. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm gonna end the video now. I mean, this is the end of my week. I finished at finishing at 2,300 miles for the week. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about real quick before I close the video. Um, is if you're getting into this industry and you know you're new i want you to be realistic with how many miles that you can drive as a solo driver well even as a team um, i want you to be realistic on how many miles you think you can drive out here and when i say that is because when i was coming into this industry i was thinking to myself you know 
oh man, I can make all kinds of money if I could get at least 3,000 miles a week. If I can make 3,000, if I could drive 3,000 miles a week, man, I'll be, you know, making pretty good money. And, uh, which is possible. You can drive 3,000 miles a week. But like I said, I want you to be realistic. Um, it's not always going to happen. And it's almost impossible to happen every week for an entire month. It's not going to happen. Um, so, uh, do this little exercise. If you're, if you're new, you know, and you're coming into this industry, this is what I want you to do. And I want you to try and figure out how many miles can you drive in 70 hours, okay? You can only drive 11 hours a day, and you can only drive the 70 hours within eight days. So you have eight days to drive 70 hours, no more than 11 hours per day. Okay, so I want you to do the math on that. And you tell me if you can run 3,000 miles a week for four weeks in a row. And, uh, and if you can make that work, okay, now I want you to throw in uh, any kind of fuel stops you, you might need to do. That's going to take time. Uh, any kind of delays you might have, your shipper delays, you know, it could take a long time, especially if you're coming reefer. It's going to take a long time to get loaded or unloaded sometimes. So, I'm not trying to be, you know, discouraging or anything. I just want you guys to have a realistic expectation, okay? You're going to get a lot of miles out here. You know, you're going to make good money. Uh, but I would not strive for 3,000 miles a week on a 70-hour clock for eight days. It's it's not impossible, but it's, yeah, it's probably impossible. You probably can't do it. But I want you guys to do the math and make a comment down below. Down below. And let me know what you've come up with, whether it's, you know, yes, I can do it or I can't do it. You just start a little conversation on that. You, you guys tell me what you think. Uh, my first week out, I did 3,000 miles. And this week, I'm only doing 2,300 miles, but I was down in the shop getting my bunk heater fixed. I was going really slow through some mountains because of uh, weather conditions. Uh, I was waiting on shippers. My, that shipper up at uh, my onions that last load I was on took forever to get me loaded I was there at nine in the morning I didn't get out until I don't know four or five at, in the in the e evening so you know little things like that kind of have to factor into your 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 plea your um, your trip planning so anyways uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and end it here um, haven't said it for a while so I'm gonna say it now uh, if you're new here please subscribe I do appreciate how many people have subscribed to this point. It's amazing, uh, but let's strive to do a little more. So if you like what you see, definitely give it a thumbs up. Give me some comments down below and uh, try to be nice. I've been getting a lot of negative comments lately and I know that's normal here on YouTube, but try to be nice. I am a rookie, remember that. You know, This is not a training channel, this is not a recruiting channel. This is just a documentation of what I'm going through and I'm sharing my journey. Speaking of that, my next journey is going back to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and this is, you know, the videos are all delayed, but this week that I'm going up there right now is that week that it's just bad weather throughout the entire country. Um, so it's going to be an interesting, interesting trip this next week, uh, and I will definitely be documenting it for the next video. All right, guys, be safe out there, and uh, hey, I'll see you down the road.